My name is Jeff Moss. I'm the uh, Chief Commercial Officer at Dematic. It's a member of the Keon Group. Uh, and with me on the stage today is Hans Thalbauer, who is the Managing Director of Supply Chain Logistics for Google. So we're happy to be here. And our topic today is going to be uh, democratizing fulfillment. We'll talk about what we think that means, uh, maybe. But before that, I just thought maybe we'd kind of lighten it up a little bit. And I'd, I'd ask you guys the question, you know, when COVID started and we were all chasing to Costco to try to find the toilet paper and, and we couldn't find it, it was, I mean, who would have thought? I mean, are we going to the bathroom more? And so what, 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 I, what amazes me, Hans, is that Google, in fact, uh, had anticipated weeks <laughs> before that, that we're going to have a toilet paper crisis. <laughs> how, how did you guys figure that out? Yeah, if that, that would be true, right? So then probably the toilet paper crisis would have not happened. Uh, but there is, uh, there was actually kind of a market trend and there were also some ante anticipations, right? And it's all about data at the end, right? So we need to think about really thinking, uh, the, taking trends into account. But the interesting thing about the toilet paper example is that the same thing what happened kind of in the end consumer side happened also with companies, right? So they also started to hoard certain uh, inventory, certain components, they didn't really need it, but they thought maybe they need it, right? So what happened actually right at the beginning of, of COVID is that shortages happened not just on the consumer side with uh, the, the toilet papers, but shortages started to happen also on the supply side with certain components. And you guys saw that happen? We saw some of it happening, not everything happening, right? So, okay. uh, so what All we are right. doing at Google, just to give everyone pretty much a, 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 an idea, uh, at Google Cloud, right, we are providing solutions um, to support companies uh, running their supply chain and logistics. And these solutions are really focused on data, right? So we really focus on intelligence, bringing data together, bringing artificial intelligence in there. We call it the supply chain twin and, and really uh, provide this kind of environment so that partners like Thematic can really access this information, make their warehouse management system, make the fulfillment process more efficient, right? So we focus on visibility and intelligence. Yeah. So and that really applies kind of to our topic this morning, which is democratizing fulfillment. I don't know what that means to everyone in the crowd. Um, for me, it, it kind of says, uh, how do you make the smallest startup, the smallest e-com fulfillment arm uh, able to compete in the marketplace? How do you enable you know, the average uh, company to do this and compete against the behemoths that are out there? And as you think about that, Hans, you know, how do you see your, your platform, your data, uh, access to data, yeah. helping democratize fulfillment? No, it's, it's, it's very, very important, right, this concept. I mean, if you look into, into the past, right, um, and think about how companies are connected, then, of course, there's the EDI connections companies are using, but only large companies, right? And then you have uh, API connectivity. Again, mainly large companies can afford to really go through all of that. So what we need to get to is really making it easy to communicate and collaborate with each other, right? Mm -hmm. I would even suggest um, that email is underestimated, right? So sharing information with email, exchanging information, using unstructured information, and make it structured again. The technology is there in order to do that, right? So making it easy for everyone to participate in the supply chain is, is key, right? We saw it, uh, the disruptions which happened now the last two years or three years, um, we saw it over and over again, right? If you're not able to get the information, if you're not able to communicate uh, with the business partners, is it a small one or a big one, um, then uh, it's a problem. Yeah. You know, Dematic, we celebrated a uh, 200-year anniversary here uh, two years ago. And uh, it's hard to believe, you know, a company has, le you know, con gone through all the changes over those 200 years and we're still in business. It, makes, it means that you have to be a, an, an agent of change. You have to adapt. You know, we're not the same company today that we were 200 years ago, obviously. And if you think about our history, you know, you know, we had steam cranes, we had casters, we helped people move pallets and boxes through warehouses. And as you think about, you know, the last, those 200 years, we've really been operating kind of a, a linear supply chain where you have raw goods, you bring them to manufacturing plants, you add value to them, 
you move them through the distribution channel, the warehouse, the retail, and then finally to the consumer. And that's the way that we've all grown up, you know, uh, in, in this industry. And now we look at, you know, where we're at today, where the customer is actually the center of the supply chain. You know, uh, so when that happens now, you have all of the, uh, these nodes that now support that. So, and I, I, I'll use an example, like, you know, returns. You guys, have, you're in the logistics industry, you're here to learn about Manifest, but you, you've heard about returns. You know, this, this concept that 30, 40, even 50% of the things that people buy online are then returning back to, uh, you know, the, uh, the retailer. So when you begin to think about that, you know, the possibility is that the, your house or your apartment actually becomes part of the supply chain. If we could have access to the data, let's say that you went online to buy shoes and you, you didn't know what size, so you bought a 10 and a half and you bought an 11 and the 11 fit and the 10 and a half didn't. And so you go online, you, you say, I'm going to return the 10 and a half. And if all of a sudden that became part of the retailer's inventory, they might actually be able to redirect that for lower cost, you know, kind of within that. So as you think about, you know, the Google's platform and, and kind of working with companies like Thematic, yeah. you know, how we could enable this, this progression from this linear world that we've all grown up in to this now customer centric world. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, right? So it's a customer centric world. And what you described is very much really fitting into this overall concept of a circular economy, right? So if you think about the concept of circular economy, it's reuse, return, recycle, right? So from the beginning to the very end, it's not just the finished product or the consumer products. It really goes down to the raw materials and we need to think about more in this circular uh, economy environment. Um, and there's, there's a great concept. It's not just a concept, actually. It's being realized more and more and really also supports this idea of what can we do in order to run more sustainable, right? And, and sustainably the, the, the whole supply chain. So absolutely agree, the customer in the center, the network approach, and then also the circularity in, in, the, in, in, in this process. How can we actually achieve to have visibility in the supply chain, right? So this all comes down to data and also the possibility to share data between the companies, right? And this is again something where we need to do better, I think, as, as an industry overall, making easier to share and trust, right? So it needs to be a trusted collaboration between the partners. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, the key in order to enable also the visibility of the one shoe, which is now at the consumer, right? So yeah. having this trusted environment is key. So therefore, cybersecurity, uh, all the technology which we need in order to make it trusted uh, is, is key in, in, in this environment. That's uh, what we do at, at Google Cloud. Yeah, yeah so you know, kind of like think about Domatic and Google. We've been doing business get together now for, you know, I don't know, probably nine or ten years that I've been involved with. Um, and, you know, it's it, when we first got an inquiry from Google, we couldn't imagine, you know, what, what are we going to move around for you guys? I mean, you know, we hadn't moved data yet, <laughs> but, but uh, it turns out, you know, we did help you automate some warehouses. And in so doing, we began a, a completely different discussion because, you know, the reality is that, um, you know, we actually work in a thematic, because we are inside the warehouse, we work in this kind of real time mode where we're making decisions in milliseconds about where to divert goods so that they can get to the right location, right? And so, you know, now as we move to this concept of democratizing fulfillment, where we move to the edge of the network. So now the, you know, what, where the, the, the website is kind of the new uh, uh, store, yes. the store is the new warehouse, yeah. right? That's, that's the, you know, where we're at. So when you think about you know, the data flows that you have to have to make that work and how, how Google can support this democratizing of, 
of fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think, you know, the, there are several concepts and several ideas which, of course, come to my mind when, when you discuss that and when you describe that. Uh, I absolutely agree, right? So we talked about the consumer in the center. We also need to have very good understanding of the market trends, the mm -hmm. forecasts, the demand side, right? Mm -hmm. I would even say, you know, the flexibility which is needed in the future might be even more than what we see today. That means maybe we see some pop-up warehouses, right? So something where we really deploy automation, right? So from mm -hmm. Thematic and also the data level, uh, and and run the warehouse for six months, and then it, it's maybe the demand is over or is, is reduced, yeah. right? And you go from one place to the next one, right? So all these ideas are actually very very important ones because it really. Uh, uh, phases into this flexibility and agility which is needed and also drives into this idea of how do we run e-commerce in, in a much better way? How can we anticipate that the demand actually goes down, up? I have this season, six months, I go there in this market and for this I need some, something, right? I need a software uh, and I need uh, to run a warehouse. Boom, let's do that, right? And this kind of flexibility we want to enable, right? With this cloud technology and then having the automation, partnering with thematic yeah. uh, so that we have really the hardware connected with the software and, and the cloud technology. Yeah, so Domatic is, we've, we probably have gotten closer to the consumer than we ever have because of this concept of the store now being the new uh, you know, distribution center, um, the new warehouse. And so we begin on, to automate inside of grocery stores. Um, and, and so what, what that means is you know, the, the, the retailers that have goods that are closer to the consumer, they're able to use those goods to deliver more efficiently within two hours, within one hour, within 10 minutes or whatever it is. They have goods that are closer to the consumer. And so, you know, it's been an interesting journey for Domatic because we've always kind of been inside the four walls of the warehouse. As we move towards, you know, the edge or these micro fulfillment centers that we're doing in, in the grocery space, you know, the, no longer can you afford to have big compute power at site, you know, because you can't afford to, that much money at the site. Yeah. And so we're continuing to look at how do we, how do we operate on the edge or remotely, right. you know, and I think, you know, in talking to you guys, you know, you're, you're helping, you know, the gamers, uh, you know, really game in real time. And, and if we can enable the ability to make decisions in a grocery store yeah. and automation in real time yeah. and have that operate in the cloud, that's exciting. Absolutely, it is, absolutely, and this needs to happen, right? So, and like you rightfully say, there is an edge component, right? And then this needs to be connected with, with the cloud component, right? Mm -hmm. So that we don't have a delay on the automation which is needed on the edge, right? So on the store side itself, there needs to be a component there, right? So absolutely. And then you connect it to the cloud in order to provide the overall visibility. Not all information needs to be exchanged, by the way, in order to get the visibility, right? So the key information needs to be changed. And then we need to tie in actually not only the information of, yes, uh, this is the inventory situation. I need to tie in information uh, which is typically not being used in, in um, supply chain or supply chain professionals don't have access to this in the context of uh, their operational data. And that's all the information like weather information, the climate information, the risk management information, sustainability information, traffic, and, 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 right? So you, all these types of information, we need to tie into the supply chain information uh, pool, if you will, so that we really have visibility, right? I can only predict the disruption of the supply chain if I know, well, um, there is actually a weather issue, or a severe weather storm or something, or there is a climate issue, there is a water shortage. Think about the semiconductor uh, example, right? So from, from last year and semiconductor shortages, right? Only very few people know that in Taiwan, actually, there is the largest uh, semiconductor production in the world. But what happened in Taiwan was that there is a drought, right? And because of the drought, the semiconductor business was asked to reduce water, so they needed to reduce capacity, right? So it was not only because of the, the demand situation increasing dramatically, right? It was also because of the drought. So the climate information needs to be part of our thinking when we, th we make decisions in, in, in supply chain, right? So this is kind of what we want to do here. Going really from, if you will, from satellite, so geo, geo kind of geospatial information to IoT information and tie yeah. this together. Yeah. That's gonna, that, it's really gonna be exciting when we match that with the things that we're doing, yeah. right? 
Now, you know, you've, you've kind of touched on a subject, and so I want to dive into it a little bit further because it's important to all of us. I mean, we're all trying to figure out how do we leave this planet in a better place, you know, than it is today, right, and still do all the things that, that we want to do. How, do. how do we protect for our kids in the future? So sustainability is a big topic, and I know Google is a leader in that area. So, you know, we'll, 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 let's touch on that a little bit, Hans, and your views, and I'll, I'll give you some, I'll give you a, a great example of, of some sustainability efforts that we're working on. Absolutely. I mean, sustainability is a huge topic, right? And, and I think for most companies in the world uh, and across the world, actually, I would say, actually say finally, right? So we are at a stage where we are not just talking, but really doing, right? And really executing and not just reporting here, this is the carbon footprint or the carbon oxide, um, dioxide kind of uh, level, but really also introducing real processes in order to reduce it, right? So what does Google do, right? So Google, like you said, um, really takes sustainability very seriously. In Google Cloud, right, and Google itself uh, is uh, carbon neutral since, since uh, 20, 2007, right? Uh, in 2017, uh, we are only using 100% renewable energy for our data centers, right? Wow. And at the same time, uh, you know, if you, if you think about it, we uh, have also introduced a lot of efficiency how we use the energy, right? Uh, for computing power, uh, actually, and, and, and the computing power the last five years increased seven times, but our energy level only increased two times, right? So there's a lot of artificial intelligence which happened there, which we also put into our data centers, managing temperatures, managing actually uh, the renewable energy mix which we can take during the day, in the night, uh, and really managing that with uh, these AI processes. So we're doing a lot there as Google Cloud. But this goes actually across Google, right, including Alphabet, right, so our mother company, if you will. And if you think about Waymo, right, so the autonomous driving, of course, is a very key example there. Think about um, the Nest example and, and anything else where it's a thermostat and, and so on, right. So it's um, in, in all the different areas at Google, is it Google Maps where you can find out uh, the most sustainable way you drive, um, where you can find also where are the uh, uh, points where I can uh, load my electronic vehicle um, and an end, right? So it goes really through all the different areas at Google. We take that super seriously and there's a lot of innovation happening in this context. And not only how we run our data centers, but also how we enable companies to be more sustainable. Sustainability has not only to do with the carbon footprint, right? So it's all sometimes very reduced to the carbon uh, discussion. But it's really more about all the greenhouse gas emissions. It's also about the water consumption. Uh, it's about the raw material uh, aspects. And it's also about the social responsibility. There's actually a big uh, and uh, an important example and a discussion in Europe, uh, especially Germany, has introduced this so-called so Lieferkettengesetz, so a supply chain legislation. Yeah. Where companies are asked, right, so uh, if they are, I think the size must be 3,000 em employees, these companies need to report in the future starting next year uh, who they are working with in their end to end supply chain. So now that's a very interesting question, right? Do all of you know who your tier one, two, three, four supply chain partners are? And the answer is almost always no. Right? And so this is something which is actually an exciting in, in aspect because now we need to report, okay, is there fair payment? Is there uh, actually the, uh, the, uh, people adhering to the rules and then comp uh, complying to the sustainability legislation? So that's kind of what happens in Germany starting next year. I think we'll see that in Europe going on faster than in other uh, uh, areas in, in the world. But this is kind of the direction we are seeing it going, right? So it's a broad spectrum when we talk about sustainability and we are heavily invested in all of that. This yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it blows me away to hear all of those things that you guys are doing. I mean, it's incredible. You know, I, I uh, one of my favorite stories, and, and you know, at Dematic, we obviously have a lot of work in sustainability as well. And you know, we we have electric motors, we have air. We're trying to get rid of the air. We're trying to you know reduce the power consumption that we have. There's all kinds of things that 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 we can kind of touch and feel that we're working on. But I think our biggest impact is really enabling our customers uh, to save the planet, right? And one of, one of my favorite stories uh, is a company called Gusto. And uh, they're, they're a UK-based company. And they're one of these meal kit delivery companies. And, and really, I think, I, don't quote me on this, but I believe their motto is something like, you know, saving the world one meal at a time. Uh -huh. So when you recruit employees and you have that mission, it really resonates. So you get 
great people that want to follow that and, and really enable that to happen. And their, their whole premise is that there's a lot of waste in food delivery, whether it's through restaurants or grocery stores or wherever, there is you know, up to 50% waste in a lot of cases. And if you could eliminate that waste, wow, that would, that would be a huge opportunity to you know, improve the planet. They, um, they now, trans, translating into what they do, they use data. So, uh, and they use artificial intelligence to begin to predict uh, in the zip codes that they deliver, you know, how much hamburger is going to be consumed, how much lettuce, how many, how many carrots, et cetera. And over time, they can get very close to the exact amount of food that their consumers in that zip code will need, and therefore, they've minimized the waste. So instead of buying two times what they need, they buy a little bit more than one times what they need, and they're delivering meals, you know, for under four pounds, yeah. right? Per meal. I mean, it's incredible. So the consumer gets a win. Yeah. The planet gets a win. The employees are empowered because they're living a mission that they can really engage with and 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 roll with. So, so I I think you know as you look at sustainability and you think about all the great things that that Google's doing, all the things that Dematic and all the great things that your companies out there are working on, it's. It's not only what we're doing internally, but what can we enable others to do? And I believe that's a real opportunity in this supply chain logistics world. Yeah, it is, it is right? And, and I think actually um, sustainability is not just a topic which stands by itself. Uh, it's not just a reporting topic. It needs to be tied into the business processes, right? So I mentioned before already the examples where the climate information plays a huge role in how you run your operations, right? So we need to learn to think in this direction also how we can optimize uh, products which are being designed, right? So when you design the product, you determine already 80% of the CO2 emissions this product will cause, right? Because you yeah. design the logistics and the supply chain in a certain way, depending on where you source, right? So it needs to be not just designing uh, for, for cost, but also designing, including the, the CO2 or the, the sustainability aspect yeah. into that, right? So when you think about these AI algorithms, they need, really need to expand and to include uh, the sustainability uh, aspect as well. And, and I think actually sustainability goes hand in hand with the resilient supply chain, the risk management topic itself, yeah. right? And so risk management, many, many companies around the world have that on top of their radar right now, right? So to manage risk better in the supply chain, how can I predict risk? Uh, and here we also need to really get, uh, think beyond the traditional ways, tie in the financial information, the insurance information, right? So the information yeah from these companies into the operations as well, right? This really helps in order to improve the, the reliability, the resilience of, of, of the supply chain, which in turn then helps again the sustainability aspect as well. So let me, we've got about two minutes left here, let me kind of wrap up and try to make sense of the whole democratizing fulfillment. You know, I think, you know, you know to, to cap it, you know, what is democratizing fulfillment? It's enabling, you know, people that may not be able to do it, compete in a world that's ever-changing, right? So enabling these startups, enabling uh, small companies to compete in a big world. And, and what does that mean? Well, and how can we do that? It's, it's about data. If we can enable them with data and platforms and automation that, that makes them competitive in the marketplace, then that's great. So we've moved from this world that we grew up in, which is linear, the supply chains were linear, and now we've moved to a customer-centric su supply chain, where there are multiple nodes and the consumer is getting goods from not only the distribution center, not only from the retail outlet, but from even, even the consumer products companies, the actual apparel companies. They, they're all part of solving that customer-centric world. And so, um, you know, as I look to the future, I really think that, you know, we're, we're going to continue to see a trend where that we move the goods closer and closer and through predictable analytics, through the use of data, we're going to be able to predict what, what goods are needed where and therefore have a, a better planet for our kids. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.